Aloha friends and family. It's your buddy Earthman Eric again. And uh, we're here inside my, uh, my palapus, which is kind of like a uh, tiki hut with the thatch and the whole deal. I built it here in tropical Missouri. Um, from palmtrees.com, you can see the video of what it looks like, what we keep in here. I've got some palm trees in here. Uh, this is Bella the rabbit. She's uh, part of the family. She kind of lives out here and uh, kind of make the, the manure. It's, uh, it's really nice to see out here. It's, I don't know if you can tell by the sound but or uh, footage, but it is raining right now. And, you know, sometimes it's, uh, you know, it's got to rain to produce and you got to have uh, rain to, you know, water the plants and things like that. Nature works so perfectly in a circular pattern. Uh, it's God's perfect, um, you know, nature, order of nature. And uh, so what, what we're doing today, well, it's picking up a mess. Kind of like, uh, kind of like when it rains, you know. It makes a mess temporarily, but in order to, to, to clean a mess or be organized, I believe that you have to make an, a mess, like, you know, take the furniture, move it, take the rug and, you know, pat it out, get the dust out in order to clean an area. So you've got to do all these things, move the furniture out of the way, take the clothes out and wash them and clean the, the drawers, things like that, that it takes a little extra work to do, but, uh, and it may look messy when you you know, scatter everything out in the middle of the room uh, to clean it. But then in the end, when you put everything back, you'll find that uh, it's clean and it's it's made new again. It looks great. You feel better about yourself. Well, and that's what we're, we're hitting on here uh, in a more spiritual sense. We want to clean our spiritual room and uh, we want to gain more of a spiritual reality in that room, um, you know, by gaining a, a more conscious, Christ-centered um, consciousness. And um, what we have here is Beyond the Veil by William Tripp Sr. And I've been reading it uh, past, uh, we're on chapter 10 now. And uh, so we've read it up to chapter 10. It's a very simple and thin read um, by a pastor. This uh, book is no longer in circulation, unfortunately. Um, but it used to be a Bible study, and if you go to the first chapter, which is Who Meditates, you'll find uh, scriptural references from the Bible uh, telling you who in the Bible meditated, and uh, I can tell you right now that Jesus did in St. Saint Peter, St. Saint Paul, uh, Mother Teresa meditated, uh, so it's not unusual. Of course, I, Mother Teresa, I believe, is a Catholic, but uh, regardless, you know, you too can meditate, and um, this is Christ-centered meditation. We know that there's Buddhist, that, uh, you know, type meditation, Confucius meditated, and people like that. Um, but we are talking about Christian meditation, people. And I have a group um, on Facebook called Beyond the Veil, B E I A uh, B E B E I L. Sorry. Beyond the Veil, Christ Center Meditation from Facebook. And uh, you can also, on this YouTube, you can post below if you have comments, questions. You can also email me personally if you want out in the public at Eric. My name's Eric with the E-R-I-C. Qua, all one word, all lowercase. P-L-O-T-T. Plot, uh, Eric Plot at Hotmail.com. And uh, you can email me that way. I get emails all the time, so don't feel discouraged. I'd love to read it and uh, comment back, send you a message back. Um, so that's one thing you can do. Uh, post below, Facebook, we're all over the web on Twitter and stuff like that. Uh, and here, all the palm trees made it, which is a great success. God's really got his hand uh, protecting and covering our plants, which is nice, and feeding them organically. Um, so that's really cool. I'm gonna bring some palm trees back in here and, have the righteousness of the palm trees uh, just you know thrive and, and uh, express and give give oxygen off into the midwestern area here in tropical Missouri. So 
Alright, I don't want to go into any of that, but like I said, if you haven't started from chapter one, go now. I'll leave, I'll leave a link right here, or you can type in at the top, uh, Beyond the Veil with Earthman Eric, plot, and then say chapter one, or try searching that way, and uh, you can go to the first chapter, and they all kind of intertwine. I, I'm going to make the videos where you can just click and be transferred to all the other chapters, and I'll make a playlist so it'll just uh, it'll just run right through continuously, automatically, just kind of like in a grouping. So, but I'm trying to make it as easy as possible. This book, uh, like I said, it's no longer in circulation, but uh, it really is a great read. It's awesome. It can change your life and enlighten your soul. So here we go, chapter ten. You look great, by the way. Thanks for showing up today in Bible study group. Um, words if you're working. In this chapter, we shall discuss... The, that's one thing. One second. Let me stop. If you read the other chapters, I think it was chapter 3 or 4, right? Um, let's say 3. You'll see that people who are addicts or drug addicts and things like that who use CCM have a 98% success rate. That means that they don't go back and use drugs and alcohol. Isn't that just wild? That, that's, that's a true statistic in fact. Whereas, and I don't, I'm not, I mean no disrespect for people who use 12 steps or AA, but the statistic for AA, uh, their success rate is less than 1% that actually uh, recover and, and don't go back to using a relapse or continuous insanities. So uh, just take those to heart and I hope you you look into those because all it takes is acceptance from, to God, patience, sec acceptance, tolerance, and effective communication. Alright, sorry I keep getting distracted. I'm a master of that. Alright, here we go. Chapter 10, forming your CCM technique. In this chapter, we shall discuss differences between structured and unstructured CCM techniques. Uh, we as Christians, especially Protestants, take pride in our abilities to worship without structure. As a pastor, I know that uh, a worship service must be structured, even if the congregation is unaware of it. Without structure, we would uh, have chaos and bedlam. All CCM techniques are structured, but many CCM techniques are unstructured. This simply means that we use uh, some, some type of structure to prime our spiritual pulp. Let us look at the difference, uh, differences between structured and unstructured CCM techniques. A uh, structured CCM is one that carefully and precisely defines what the inner spiritual activity is that you are working towards. Breath, uh, breathe control, uh, is, as pre previously described, is a structured form of CCM. The instructions are to count your breaths up to four and then start over again. You must keep trying to be aware only of this counting every time you begin to think of it or become aware of anything else. You must bring yourself back gently and firmly to the counting. So it's one, two, three, four, one. See, and then you repeat one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and you try to stay in a pattern. And when you start thinking of, oh, there's that, that football game on, or I gotta go cook the, uh, you know, pie, or whatever you have to do, Try to get back to the counting and the breathing and staying still and not thinking but listening to the Creator. And uh, that's how you stay focused and you don't get distracted. And, um, it, that's what Christ Center Meditation is all about. So when we start to being distracted, then being able to firmly bring us bring back to where your counting was. And do this for 15 minutes. They say 15 minutes twice a day if possible. It will change your life. The instructions are precise and must be followed exactly. In doing so, the result of, uh, of this discipline is predictable. You will be focused on one task, breathing and counting, and therefore you will be led to a focused meditative experience. 
In our first efforts in breathe control, uh, you have seen that it is hard and disciplined work. It requires your constant attention and vigilance. This is a total effort to follow directions with your whole being. The deeper we get into it, the more we practice it, the more expert we become. The more we see that it is, it is impossible to do completely without some real spiritual expansion. Expansion of how we perceive and relate to spiritual reality. It is not possible for us to think actively and dynamically on just one thing. We become involved in comparisons or classes of things. It is exactly this task which the directions of the meditation tell us uh, tell us must be alone. We are faced with this impossible task. When we work hard and in a disciplined manner, we discover the true spirituality in our meditations can be and will be achieved. We therefore find structure in our prayer life and our spiritual walk with the Holy Spirit. In this structure, you will gain a sense of being in the Spirit. The goal of unstructured CCM is the same as structured, but uh, it is arrived at different ways. In practicing unstructured CCM, you think about a subject and simply stay with the subject um, and your own feeling about it. In unstructured CCM, you may choose a word, an image, a phrase, or a concept of the Holy Scriptures. Or you may use a problem that you're experiencing at that moment. Uh, when you focus on the subject and have, you have chosen, explore your spiritual reactions and feelings about it. It differs from free association in which you are following your inner reactions wherever uh, they may lead you. When you are focused, you keep to the subject itself and how you think and spiritually feel about it. Uh, in this type of CCM, we discover that there are two central points. The facts of the matter and how you feel about them. So you are meditating on your capacity to love your enemies. Then the two central points would be, how do I love the spirit? And how do I feel about these facts? Your thinking is kept revolving around these two centers and folding back up on them whenever it strays away. Later in the book, I will give you examples to try. If used, they will keep you more uh, insight into unstructured CCM. In unstructured CCM, we are attempting to free our personality structure in the area of the Holy Spirit. To be aware of and accept our spiritual ability to love our enemies, for example, in this new understanding, we will grow spiritually if done consistently under the aid of the Holy Spirit to in integrate yourself fully and to grow. It will have this effect. It is not done by easily, drow uh, drowsily wandering through the subject. That may be pleasant, just relaxing and daydreaming, but it is not CCM. The Holy Spirit must be present, directing your spiritual attention more fully towards the subject and your relationship to it. There is no particular point except experiencing and seeing what you like, what it is like. In doing CCM, either structured or unstructured, just once. To be of any spiritual value, it must be repeated over, from, uh, over a period of time. I suggest that these periods range from several weeks to several months or longer. You may experience true spirituality after a few times, but each time you practice these steps, you will discover higher levels of spirituality than you would have ever thought possible. Three more pages. Let me drink a little break here. Drink some hair juice. Okay. Unstructured meditation techniques are often necessary in CCM program to free the emotions and feelings in the spiritual area. Structured CCM alone may be formal and intellectually orientated to help you move to the most rapid pace possible towards your goals. I have uh, discovered that a mixture of both styles of CCM will be bring the Christian to their spiritual goals more quickly. I recommend that you use the structured method of CCM. It will enable you to establish the discipline 
uh, needed in the beginning. Later, use the unstructured technique for indi individual spiritual growth. You will discover that the unstructured techniques will release your emotional spirituality while training you in your intellectual lifestyle. Let us use uh, another method of describing the spiritual CCM technique. We will classify them as CCM, the outer way, the middle way, and the inner way. The outer way, in the outer way, we start with something externally given, uh, something on the outside which will we will focus on and work from. For example, we take an empty handcrafted cross and we work uh, simply at looking at it, exploring it with our eyes, uh, and stroking it with our hands. We try to learn to do this uh, as non-verbally as possible, not talking in our heads about it. We want to feel a part of it, become identified with the symbolism of the crucifixion. This CCM of the outer way is one of the hardest but most productive for many people. In Christianity, we may take one of the Psalms and focus on it. The emphasis in the outer method of CCM is that we take something outside ourselves and work with, with it in a spiritual fashion. Okay? Now for the middle way, the middle way. The middle way may be referred to as the freeing of the spirit from the flesh. Uh, it is not a trance or drowsy state. What is sought after is being alert and dynamically balanced spiritually without conscious thought. When this state is achieved, we will respond to events as they occur. We respond with our spiritual, Christ-like focus and with denominational hang -up, without denominational hang-ups or glorifying of self. In the uh, by Byzantine desert, but Byzantine desert, Christians who practice CCM in the uh, Hesychast tr tradition knew it as the way of the man with the silent mind. More recently, in Western Christian tradition, there were the Quietist. They worked towards a blank state of alert passive passivity in order to receive God's message. It is best that I, I not give you examples of this type, type of CCM. It requires complete dedication of self and time. It should only be entered with uh, the help of an experienced CCM practitioner. This should never be done by a practitioner who is not well grounded in the Holy Spirit. To the immature Christian, it may present many traps used by Satan to impersonate God's direction. There are retreats for CCM practitioners who desire to maintain the middle awareness uh, technique. I found that all three, three ways of CCM arrive at the same goal despite the different paths followed. Each does have its own special effects and emphasis on the path to spirituality. The outer way brings practitioners special uh, spiritual strength. They begin to feel a new sense of Christian confidence and the ability to cope with this world in which we live. New confidence in the Holy Spirit's influence over self and uh, re resultant ability to make Christ's influence decision quickly uh, and accurately. In the middle way, we see uh, special spiritual strength in CCM practitioner's ability to remain calm in the face of outside events. Primarily, the practitioner will see things in the world, abortions, wars, etc., as they are, sin, instead of how we would like, to, uh, like them to be. The practitioner's uh, response to them is less filled with irrelevant emotions. When this is brought to the highest state of spirituality, the practitioner can then respond to society's sin instead of the symptoms as manifested by the sinful society. For example, instead of attacking abortion clinics, we can work for society, we can work for society's attitude uh, about life. We can work society's attitude about life. In the inner way, especially in the inner way, especially increases your spiritual awareness, acceptance of your own emotional life and your feelings. 
It becomes easier to enjoy and express them as you become comfortable with them. If you are experiencing a feeling of emotional detach from God at this stage of your Christian walk, you may wish to explore this technique. It's a good one to start with. Uh, cool. Getting to your inner self. That's the end of chapter 10. We'll be at chapter 11. Now you can click to it or you can listen to me. Uh, but chapter 11 is uh, the CCM technique of the mantra. Sounds cool. Um, so that was a great chapter. Great read. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you have any comments, uh, arguments, debates, ideas, questions, leave them a post below on YouTube channel. Um, or uh, you can go to the Facebook Bible study group, Beyond the Veil, Christ-Centered Meditation. Uh, you can email me per privately at ericplot at hotmail.com. Feel free to ask any questions or whatever you have. Uh, we're here to help you um, establish a, a better relationship with God by connecting with Him through meditation. And that's what uh, this is about. This is a lost tool that a lot of people don't use. Uh, I mean, a lot of Christians uh, might not even pray. Uh, so this may be, this is kind of a step up for prayer warriors or people who already pray a lot and they want to know how they can advance their uh, the next step of their, their walk with God. Um, and it's a great start, you know, and uh, it's really, it's pretty simple. It, it does take hard work, but it is simple if you just take it easy and you breathe. You'll feel better, life will look better, you'll breathe better. Uh, you know, you'll connect with God better. You'll connect with others better, hopefully. And, uh, you know, it can just change your life. It can take you places you never thought possible. And uh, so, yeah. And, again, if you want to backtrack through chapters, um, we're going to have a link coming up here soon. Or check out my channel, the Plots Health channel. And that will be here. I'll have the movie on Blaze 1145172 movie channel. It'll be the whole movie of this Bible study, Beyond the Veil, by William Tripp. I love y'all. Thank you guys for coming. And uh, I'm just going to show you, walk around here at the uh, Palapus real quick. I really do appreciate you coming. Tell your friends and family about this group. And uh, you know, it's just for more of a personal experience so as far as um, you know getting better you know w w within yourself and not necessarily you know doing it for other people and that's what we're trying to do here is to show people that uh, you, you can go to church on Sunday and you can impress uh, everybody and I'm not saying that's what people do but you know going to church and then you know, putting the tithe in the plate. Those are all awesome things to do. But now stretching ourselves a little bit more and uh, being able to, you know, I guess up the, uh, raise the bar, up the ante in your spiritual walk with Christ and uh, have a real connection, have a real relationship with Him. Uh, God is uh, a, a friend. He's your Father and he, he wants to talk to you. And you can you can connect with our Savior, the Lord above. So, um, you know, it, it's 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 one of the probably one of the greatest misconceptions is to believe that uh, you know our, our our Father God is not you know an entity which we can connect with. He is. I know from personal experience. I've I've seen it, and He's helped me uh, fulfill my pur purpose, and I've been enlightened. I enjoy life a lot more. Um, if you see me, if you knew me before, I was depressed all the time and down in the dumps. I just didn't enjoy life. So, you know, woe me, pity me, and all that. I, I've been that route, and I've been in the route where, you know, self delusions of thinking, oh, I'm okay, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing drugs or, you know, whatever, whatever you're, you're doing, you know, drinking. People drink. People have, have sexual affairs, and there's all types of things in the world that are accepted now, and uh, socially accepted, culturally accepted, and biblically not accepted, not scripturally accepted. Jesus doesn't accept it. Doesn't. Uh, I don't think it's in the best for him. And 
it, it, it's really not as difficult if you get by go to a good Christian based church or you know find some good Christian people and um, connect with them and really try to you know establish uh, a good clean, clean healthy lifestyle I like to call it I, I think that's the best way if you're dealing with drug addiction and things like that I found it's great and all to be clean and sober uh, I guess temporarily but it's even better to be healthy because when you think about it you use drugs you smoked weed or you drank or you did cocaine or you're on antidepressants and I'm going to tell you the secret right here that the doctors won't tell you is that you do those things the drugs and the alcohol for instance you do these things because you're not healthy see if you were healthy and you were happy I can promise you this that you would not need any drugs or alcohol at all. I'm telling you, take the leap of faith. I'm telling you, take my word for it. Go and, and, and invest that money you would put into the drugs, the prescriptions, the, the, the 12, 24 pack, and go buy you some apple juice, orange juice, niacin, get that stuff out of your system, put, put down the cigarettes, break it, and just leave people for a while. Be a hermit if you have to, and just just go and, and um, allow your body to let those poisons just sweat out of you and, and go soak in the bath whatever you have to do to clean cleanse yourself pray to God and tell him help me Lord to to get through these moments it's gonna be a hard time but I know you can make it you can help me get through this strengthen me strengthen my faith to believe in you Lord Jesus I'm praying for you people out there who are struggling right now I put your put my hand on you uh, <laughs> Through virtually or in whatever way I'm praying for you for your healing Lord Jesus just just help them help deliver them like they like you delivered me from from the pits of evil I was touched the flame I've been in the fiery pits and now I'm back and I'm stronger than ever and I know these people can do it they just you gotta quit remember that a boy makes excuses a man makes change bad attitude's like a flat tire you won't get anywhere until you change it and that if it doesn't apply then let it fly but Lord, let this fit them. Let this shoe fit these people. Let them fit you out there, the viewer that, that's struggling. I, I pray, Lord, if in any way to just heal and mold these people for their purpose and to have them progress and grow like, like the cedar of Lebanon, Lord, which is tall, one of the tallest trees. And, Lord, I just pray that, um, that, that we could all just have a healthy, blessed future and pour down the favor for everyone listening and, and the favor for this group, this Bible study. Lord, just bless it. And Lord, uh, I, I pray all these things. Your wonderful name, Jesus' name, amen. And remember, I love y'all. And what I'm saying is straight from the heart. I've been through the, the, the pits of hell and back. And I'm telling you, if you're healthy, that it's it, it, it doesn't become an issue of oh I've got 60 day clean or I got a year or five years clean because I've seen people five and ten years clean who've, who've, who've uh, relapsed but when does the relapse stop the, the relapse stops when life begins and life begins with a healthy future start your healthy future today uh, I have I have all these